John Dove here from the Advocacy Club. We've just had our April session of the Advocacy Club, uh, and tonight we were dealing with the application to set aside default judgment. So I've been watching some of the um, applications that have been made tonight, and I'm going to share some feedback with the group. So I'm going to start with um, sort of general tips in terms of the structure itself. So with the structure, you need to um, give a, a very general introduction. Uh, and one thing I saw, which I quite liked actually for, from some of the advocates tonight, was they started by asking the judge um, whether he has had a chance to read the papers and whether he had the full papers, which was always, uh, it's always a good way to start your submissions actually because it's just courteous. And also, as the advocate, it means that you can be sure that the judge has actually seen the papers, because ultimately, if the judge hasn't seen the papers, um, he or she isn't going to be able to sort of follow your submissions logically. Uh, so it's always good for you to know that. So uh, so I think that's a really good way to, to start. And then from there, we had a very simple roadmap from each of our uh, advocates. Um, with this, the roadmap is quite simple. It's effectively you're going to set out what the legal test is. So uh, tell the judge why you're there. And so ultimately, with this case, you're asking, you're telling the judge that you're applying to set aside default judgment. And you say you're going to rely upon the test in 13.3 of the civil procedure rules, which is, and then set out the, the three stages of, of that test. And then from there, you're going to jump into the bulk of, of the submissions themselves. Um, what I saw from a number of advocates tonight was they were um, giving me sort of signposting each time they jumped onto a different section uh, of the test itself. So we start with the first test, which is sort of the merits of the claim. So what you look, what the, the court is looking for here is how strong is the case? So you don't need to prove that you're going to win the case. You don't need to show um, that you, you, even that you're going to win on the balance of probabilities. All you need to show based on the case law is that you've got a case that's more than merely arguable. And we included a couple of cases within the uh, within the bundle that were cited in your skeleton arguments that you could rely upon uh, to, to make that point. Um, you don't need to go into too much detail on this. And of course, you had, um, you had some information about the contract case itself and what the points were for the contract case that you were going to rely upon. But ultimately, before you even get to that, you need to set out what the legal principles are. So tell me from the case law, and I think the, the, the main case that we were citing here was, was the Utex Africa case, um, what the legal test is. Um, that can be as simple as taking me to the relevant part of the judgment uh, and then going through that. Uh, and what, what people would do is they would take me to the specific page uh, of the bundle where the case was, take me to the specific paragraph where you know the legal test might have been set out. But what you always need to remember to do is if, if you are going to take the judge to, to that part of a, or any part of a bundle, make sure that the judge finds that part of the bundle before you do so. Because if you carry on talking while the judge is still flicking through trying to find that section, the judge isn't listening to what you're saying. So wait for the judge to find it. If you're going to be reading a section, make sure that the judge is actually reading along with you so that they're taking in uh, the general principle. We then moved on to, to, to point two, and that's whether there was any other good reason for setting aside default judgment. Um, and what was quite nice about this factual matrix is there was quite a lot of material for you here. So ultimately, with this case, you had a matter whereby there was a glitch in the case management system. The email to his client to arrange a conference to draft the defense uh, went into her junk folder. And also he was in on holiday in Australia at the time and only found out about the application to set aside default judgment two days after coming back to work when he finally got through his emails. So there were, uh, you know, a few really, really good points to go in your favor and certainly no malice and certainly no fault on, on, on that point. So all you need to do is present that really simply and, and try and present that as convincingly to the court as possible. You don't need to go around the houses. You don't need to try and cite any case law to rely upon it. Just look at the simple facts, tell the court that there's been no fault, tell the court that the solicitor's been diligent in this case and that he's acted um, as promptly as he possibly could, which takes you nicely onto the final point, which is promptness. And this is where you are back onto the case law itself. So with this point, uh, we had a couple of cases which looked at the 
general principles of promptness for sort of this application and other civil applications. Um, and of course, it looks at specific time frames. Uh, and what was nice about this is that we're well within, I think it's about 22 days um, it takes to, to respond to the application or to make the application to set aside the default judgment. And the case law says that um, 59 days is sort of the upper limit of, of what is acceptable. So we're well within that time frame. So as long as you take the court through that, explain to the court um, what the case law is, what the case law says, and then you buttress that that are the, the case law and make that argument that we're well within that time frame, then you're fine. And then you need to tie that off with a nice sort of conclusion there. And the conclusion doesn't need to be anything um, life changing. It can be something simple as based on those submissions, I would ask that you set aside default judgment. Um, what one turn of phrase that I heard tonight, which was quite nice, was um, ultimately there is no prejudice to any of the parties. So that's the sort of structure and how you would present the argument. Um, just looking at some sort of presentation points, and these are things I talk about all the time, but but uh, it's just as important as ever. So think about the way that you present. So think about the pace of your voice. Try and present nice and slowly. Try and present with an air of authority because a slower pace is easier to follow. If the judge can follow you more easily, they're more likely to take in what you're saying and therefore you're more likely to be persuasive that you need to be an interesting advocate. So you don't want a sort of monotone, boring voice. You need to vary the pitch and pace and keep it interesting. And you can certainly do that within a, an application of this nature. So those are the, the points based on what I've observed tonight. I hope that you've found those helpful.